Grandma's 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 Kitchen. Grandma's Kitchen. There's a fiddle tune and a wooden spoon while she's stirring and a singing. There's friends leaving our family land and then the phone's usually ringing. No matter who you are or what you've done, everything's forgiven. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank and ain't it good to be in Grandma's Kitchen? Grandma's Kitchen. Hello everybody, Mary Janet here from Tunes and Wooden Spoons and uh, great to be back with all of you. I just, I feel every, every Sunday I'm just expecting company and I get all ready and, and it's just so nice because as much as, as you are getting out of these Sunday visits, I'm getting just as much out of it here. So anyway, Welcome back and thank you very much for returning and thanks to all the new ones. I just kind of had a look at some of the messages there and I glanced and I saw Tina from, uh, formerly from Mabu and she's living in Kitchener. Hi Tina, I need to know who you are. Are you the Tina from Brook Village or, or where are you from? So around here we need to know who's who. So um uh, and hello to everybody else that's joining us from so many places. Some people were noticing the pickle jars in the back. Well, I can't take credit for that. Cecil, uh, Cecil is the pickler in the family. He made his uh, famous mustard chow. And he makes two things. He makes his mustard chow and he makes um, his mother's uh, pickled beets every year. And... Uh, so it's it's he loves giving the bottle to, uh, away to friends and family and keeps enough for ourselves so he just made a bunch of that and i i was going to move them all off the counter and i said ah maybe somebody will like to to look at that and maybe i can send you the recipe if you like doing that you need 12 cucumbers i know that <clears throat> But before we start, well, number one, I want you to turn your oven to 350 and I want you to, uh, you're going to need a, uh, about a quarter cup of hot water, a quarter cup of boiling water. So put your kettle on. Uh, so we're going to need that shortly. So if you'd put that on, I'm going to go wash my hands. But first of all, I really need to do a shout out here to some wonderful young bakers that are here that uh, are, are watching the show and they're right across Canada some young people are baking and isn't that just wonderful I get pictures all the time and there's a wee gal out in BC Emily hi Emily she has her own little toy kitchen and she pretends like she's me and she's baking and she's just adorable she draws pictures and her mom sends them to me and it's just so special and besides that, uh, in Antigonish, there's a young gal there, Emerson McDonald. Hi, Emerson. I've heard about you through my son, Mitchell, who knows your dad. And I hear that you've been baking every week with me. And aren't you amazing? And I understand that you even had a broken arm at one point there. And you still kept on going. So hi, Emerson. And it's great that you are baking. And also, I had a great visit from three little gals from Truro. And uh, I make, don't want to make sure that I remember all their, their names. Uh, there's Brittany and Brianna and their uh, youngest sister, Kaylee. Kaylee is the baker. Hi, Kaylee. And hi, Brittany and Brianna. But they came to visit me. I'm a good friend of their grandma's in Mabu. And uh, I guess Kaylee bakes all the time. And they came here and they visited 
for a little bit a couple of days ago and it was so special to meet these young bakers and uh, she's a great hugger that Kaylee so thank you Kaylee and your sisters Brittany and Brianna for coming and and visiting with me along with your grandma Sarah Bell she's a great gal as is your grandpa Raymond so it's just so nice to know it's a great skill to have is baking and uh, all of these young bakers that have found this time during COVID to to find the time to do something special like that and to learn with their their moms or their dads or their grandmas or with me and and it's great it's a good skill to have and um, again hopefully your 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 kettle is boiling there because we'll need it very shortly but I wanted to tell you one other thing um, I wanted to wish my grandson Jake this coming week, uh, my grandson, Jake, he's going to be turning 18 on the uh, 29th, I think. I'm pretty sure. There's, I have 12 grandchildren, so sometimes I forget the dates. But I'm pretty sure it's the 29th of August, next Saturday. So Jake, I know uh, he's, uh, he's had a tough year, graduated in, in Fort Mac, like so many graduates. And, uh, you know, it just wasn't a great time for the graduates their special time but uh, they did whatever they could to make it right and uh, he's taking the year off he's going to work this year instead of going uh, to university or to to community college so uh, a lot are doing that this time so anyway hi Jake and all the best to you and enjoy your 18th birthday so I think that's all of my uh, my uh, little notes i've got such a bad memory i gotta i gotta i gotta do this um i have to make my little notes uh we will not be having a musical guest this today but next sunday we're going to have lisa cameron and her son finn so i'm really looking forward to that i've played uh lisa's um disc for you uh you know a couple of times on the show so uh, looking forward to having her here live and she's a great songwriter uh similar like aaron is his own sings his own songs as does lisa she's amazing and of course you know everybody's related to everybody lisa's first cousins would be the rankin family in mabu uh, who are so talented and made a name for mabu and their and themselves all over the world so looking forward to that so i better be quiet Today, I, I already told you last week what we're making, but we're making the most delicious orange blueberry loaf. Honest to God, I made it this week. It was my first time making it. Pat Cormier, who is a follower on um, Toons and Wooden Spoons, we private message now and again, like I do to many of you. And, uh, you know, she'd be sending me pictures of th things that she makes. But this loaf really intrigued me because uh, she sent it to me because I had mentioned blueberries are in season and why not have some blueberry recipes. And uh, so I trusted her judgment based on uh, many of the pictures of her baked items that she had sent me. And she was not wrong. It is the most moist loaf that I've ever made. And I'm really looking forward to making it with you. And I hope you have the same result as I did. And I'll be having a little piece of the one I made on Wednesday to have tea with you. I'll be putting this loaf in the oven and then, and, and then I'll be having a chat with you. But I won't be with you when it comes out of the oven. Um, but I'll tell you what to do at that point. So I'm going to wash my hands. Make sure your oven is on 350 and that your kettle is boiling because you'll need a quarter cup of boiling water. Okay, be right back. Okay. I'm going to trip here. You see, I have a little mic here today. I hope you all can hear me pretty good anyway. And I have my trusty little cell phone here in case my daughter is checking your questions because I can't see them. But when I sit for tea, I'll kind of have a glance through any at that time. 
So we're going to start. I posted the recipe on my website and on uh, the Facebook page. Just about 10 to 2. So you probably have that in front of you now. I hope you do. And we're going to start off with two cups of flour. We're going to work on our dry ingredients. All right. I'm looking at my computer and I should be looking at you, the, the camera. So we're going to start off with two cups of flour. Okay. And I'm playing my favorite CD, as you can hear. That, that opening tune that I uh, played, um, I think it was Allie Bennett that was playing it. But it's, it's, a, it's an old uh, Gaelic song, and it's so, so nice. Okay, so two cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, And a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. And a half a teaspoon of salt. I just made a mistake there. I only put an eighth of a teaspoon of baking soda. I thought it was a quarter teaspoon, so I have to put another one in. There. So one quarter teaspoon of baking soda. So just, just to review, two cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, and a half a teaspoon of salt. All right? So you're going to mix that up. I'm just going to use my whisk for the dry ingredients. Now, we're going to add the zest. You, you don't have to do this part. You don't have to add the zest of an orange to the dry ingredients, but I'm just going to do that. And uh, I've washed my, my orange, and you make sure you save your orange after because we're going to use some of the juice. So just get the zest. And try not to get the, uh, don't, don't zest right down to the white part, because that, that's bitter. This will give it just a little bit of, a little more tang. You can use your, your grater for this as well. And if you don't have an orange, that's okay. As long as you have orange juice, that'll do it. And you just have to be, don't have to be too fussy. I think that's plenty. So I've just done a bit like that. Okay, now mix that up again. Okay, are you with me? I hope so. So I'm just going to put this aside. Just put it right over here. And this is where you're going to need your boiling water. So I have just a little small bowl like this or whatever you have. And you're going to put two tablespoons of soft butter in it, okay? I'm just kind of guessing at two tablespoons there. Okay. 
Okay. And I have my water boiling and it's, I'm going to use a quarter cup of boiling water, okay? Holy moly. Okay, just pour it over the butter. And you're just gonna you know, like stir it. And you cut the butter up and it will all melt up really good. You can squash it over to the sides, that'll help Oh, can you use lemon instead? You can if that's what you have, and then it'll be a lemon blueberry loaf. Absolutely. You do what you want. Um, yes, yeah, don't worry about that. It's all about what you like. Because I, I, I never really ever tried an orange loaf before, so I was really pleasantly supplied, uh, surprised. So maybe someday you will try it with an orange if you like orange. Okay, so mine is nice and melted. I'm just gonna put it aside. And then in a, in a smaller bowl, you're going to put some of your wet ingredients. So in this, it's gonna be one egg, all right? one egg and I'm just going to whisk that a little bit just to mix it up. That's all you need to do. And one cup of white sugar. I'm using a half cup measure. So one cup. That's a half and one. And you're going to need a half a cup of orange juice. Now I'm not going to use the juice of the orange. I'm going to save that for later because I'm going to be making a glaze. Okay. Half a cup. I just use the orange juice that is real orange juice. And I don't use the kind that have pulp because the grandkids don't like the pulp. I love the pulp. So it doesn't matter what you use. You can use the juice off your real orange if you have lots of oranges in, or just a half a cup. You can use the frozen orange juice that you've mixed up with water, whatever you want, and you just add that in there. And we're going to mix that up. Until you can hear the and feel that the sugar is well mixed. I'm sure you have one cup of fresh blueberries already. And if you don't, uh, if you're using frozen, you can use um, a, an equal amount or maybe a little bit more. Whenever I use uh, frozen blueberries, I, I put the, the, the cup full or the little better than a cup full, just lay it out on a bunch of paper towel and I just kind of pat it so that it's... There's not so much wet in it, I, uh, but I take them straight out of the freezer. I don't, I don't let them thaw first. I just find with the, with the fresh blueberries, you don't get 
a, a blue with the frozen ones I, I, it, uh, it will turn your batter sometimes it'll turn it kind of blue but with the fresh blueberries it doesn't really do that okay I think we just have to add the uh, the butter and the hot water now to this mixture mix that and now take your dry ingredients now I've kind of made a little well in the center it kind of helps and pour your wet ingredients in the middle don't waste anything scrape the sides really good There you go. And just bring the dry ingredients in and just mix it. Mix it until you can't see any evidence of flour. You don't want to beat it or anything like that. Not when you're making a quick bread like this. Now I'm going to be using an, um, a 9 by 5 inch uh, loaf pan. You use whatever, whatever you have, but that, that seems to be just, the, it's not a great big loaf pan, it's kind of a, a small one. Okay, that's, that's nicely mixed. Can you see that? All right. Oh, it smells so good. I'm sure those who are using lemon will feel the same way if you love lemon. But I love this smell of orange and the orange juice. It's beautiful. Okay, now you're going to fold in a cup of blueberries. Fresh from Craignish Mountain. Thanks to... Um, Mark and Elaine Pettipa, who's summer in Craigmore. And look, it's nicely mixed. As long as you see batter on all of your blueberries, that's all you have to mix, okay? Beautiful. So that's what my batter looks like. You can see that it's not blue. I know I used to make uh, blueberry muffins with frozen blueberries, and the batter would always turn, turn blue because you're, you're using frozen and they're kind of wet and whatever. Doesn't change um, the taste any, but it, it changes the, the color and, and it's fine. It's just fine. So now we're gonna get ready to put it in our loaf pan. Put that aside. This is my pan. It's nine by five and I am just going to give a little spray to the two ends. You don't have to. I like to, but I just do a little spray on both ends. Just maybe a little bit in the middle so that the parchment paper will stick. And I put my parchment paper not quite longer than the, the pan because I just want it to drape over. So let me see here. That's about enough right there. And just tuck it down and let it hang over the sides. And what's so great about that is when you are going to be taking it out of the pan once it's been cooling for 15 minutes, 
it's just going to be so much easier. You might have to slide a knife down on the two ends. Okay, so now let's pour that in. Oh my God, it smells good. <laughs> that orange just so good. I have some great stuff to tell you about very shortly, about a tour that's happening in Inverness County that's hosted by a friend of mine. And uh, I'll give you more information when I sit down for tea. But I'm so excited because it's just for right here in Inverness County. And um, I'll be joining the Friday night little welcome. So anybody, it's leaving from Halifax on Friday, September 25th. And it's three days and two nights. But I'll give you all the information. And I'll be posting a link on my site. It's actually going to be popping up. I've already done the link and it'll be popping up on my Facebook page at three o'clock, but I'll give you more information on that. So that is, that is the loaf. So it probably comes up to about, there's only about an inch left uh, height in this, in this pan. And so you're gonna put it in the 350 oven that you've preheated. And it's going to be in there for one hour. And then you're going to test it with your cake tester. And really, if there's any stickiness at all, put it in for like three more minutes. Test it again. If you find your oven hasn't cooked it through, put it in for another couple of minutes. It's not going to hurt another five minutes over. But just make sure that so you don't want any doughy uh, residue on, 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 on that uh, cake tester. Okay, so I'm going to put it in. I'm going to set my timer for one hour. I'm going to turn my kettle on and then I'm just going to sit here with you and we'll have a little chat. Okay, one second. And turn your kettle on if you're going to have tea. And you're not even going to hear my kettle today because I changed to a manual kettle just for the show so it's not making a bunch of noise. And uh, my son Brennan will be very proud that it's not interfering with, with, this, with the production. <laughs> I have such nice looking tomatoes here. Look at that. Isn't garden time just so awesome? They smell good. I love tomatoes and I like keeping them at room temperature. I hate tomatoes that are cold and in the fridge. That's just me. And uh, I'll just sh show you Cecil's chow. You see that? It's cucumbers, onions, Vinegar, turmeric, some dry mustard, I think. Vinegar, of course. Anyway, that's it. Okay, I'm going to come over here with my paraphernalia. And I hope that I don't disconnect anything here.
Hi. You get to see this light that shines in my face. So, this is my nice, moist cake from last week. Now, sorry. You get to see all my mess. I forgot to, I should have cleaned up a little more. Anyway, so the, on the recipe, which I'll bring over here, the, the, the orange blueberry loaf is just fine on its own, the way that uh, we've baked it in the oven. Don't have to do anything to it. And you're going to leave it in the pan when it comes out, put it on a cooling rack, and for 15 minutes you're going to leave it in the pan. And then after 15 minutes you're going to lift up the, uh, the, the whole loaf out of the uh, pan and you're going to put it on the cooling rack. And you're going to take the, the um, parchment paper away from the sides and from underneath and you're going to leave it on the cooling rack until it is absolutely at room temperature and once that's done and if you can stay away from it without cutting it of course you can do that but um, then if you wrap it in foil wrap completely wrap it in foil wrap and don't have it until tomorrow it it just it changes it's it's even more moist it, it's just beautiful however there are some variations to it that you can you can do you can <clears throat> do what i did and take the juice off your orange up to uh you know just just uh, juice your orange and uh, i have a little little gadget here that little thing and I would juice the orange I do have a beautiful new lemon juicer that I got from Pampered Chef uh, but my orange was too big for it so I had to use this and whatever juice you get out of that orange uh, top it up with regular orange juice up to a half a cup and uh, And half a cup of sugar. Yeah, and half a cup of sugar. And I, I just noticed that in the recipe that I would have posted, I didn't say that I put the juice of one orange, but make sure you top it up to about half a cup. So it's a half a cup of juice and a half a cup of, of, of white sugar. And you put that in a saucepan on the stove until like maybe for 45 seconds or, or a minute just until you can't feel, really feel the crystals anymore. And while your a loaf is cooling for that 15 minutes, while it's hot right out of the oven, pour, pour that whole bunch of, of uh, glaze all over the loaf, similar to what we did with the lemon loaf. And just, it's, it's gonna be messy, it's gonna be in the pan, but that's, that's just the way it is. And then once uh, 15 minutes is up and it's been cooling in the pan for 15 minutes, just remove it and, and leave the parchment paper underneath it while it's cooling to room temperature. And wrap it the same way in the foil and um, it's, it's just so delicious. Now the other option that you would have is to make a little icing sugar glaze, very watery uh, glaze with uh, some, uh, put a little bit of butter you know, in, in, a, in bowl. Did I put that in here? Uh, I didn't. I didn't put that in here because I figured, you know, you can do it. You can figure that out yourself. But what I would do is put like maybe a teaspoon of butter 
and then put some orange juice and then put some icing sugar until it's kind of uh, transparent almost and just pour that glaze over the top your preference I pre I kind of like the orange juice and the sugar uh, that you mix up and heat up and and put over the um, put over the the loaf but it's it's really really good okay I'm going to go set my tea just hold on a minute oh my goodness are you okay there? Didn't hurt anybody. You're still there. <laughs> so, I set my tea, so I have to wait about five minutes, which reminds me, my, my son Mitchell and his wife Laura, well, her parents were over on the weekend. We have known them and been, have been with them for years as you do with in-laws and they're just a wonderful couple live in reserved minds it was her lemon squares that we made there a couple of weeks ago but anyway they were here this morning for a little breakfast before they left to go back to reserved minds as was Mitchell and Laura and the kids and all these years I've been making tea whenever she'd come to visit and I only find out it was last night when we were having supper together that she doesn't like strong tea. She pours hot water in a cup and she takes a tea bag and <laughs> she dips it, dips it in, colors the water. That's, that's just, that doesn't speak to me as a gay partner. <laughs> so I said, why didn't you tell me after all these years? That, that's the way you liked your tea. The poor thing was drinking my tea, which is nice and brown. But anyway, poor Charlene. So, what do I have to share with you today? Um, the post that is going to be coming up uh, at 3 o'clock on my Facebook page is uh, from Sandy Travel Tours. Now, Sandy Travel Tours are right out of uh, this area. Um, in Port Hood, there is, there is a, an, another area called Hawthorne, and that's where the tour uh, director, owner, operator, Ron McCacken lives on a beautiful farm uh, in, in uh, beautiful downtown Hawthorne. It's on, it's on a, a dirt road, it, it's great. We, had, we joke about it all the time. But uh, Sandy Travel Tours, he's been running tours for many years now, and I've actually been on three of his tours and kind of helped him out on, on a couple of tours. And two of them were to Scotland, and uh, Cecil and I went once to Scotland, then I went by myself with him on, on the Scotland tour with Ron McCacken to, to help out. And then last year we went on the Ireland tour and met so many great people that we're still friends with today. And so, of course, 2020, no trips. Uh, he usually does uh, a few uh, a year uh, to Italy and Spain and Portugal and, and uh, of course, Scotland and Ireland. So that didn't happen this year. And my husband and I are, are already, we're go, our wedding anniversary is next year. We're 50 years married next year. And we were going to go 
we are going to go. I am going to stay positive. We're going on this new tour that uh, Ron McCacken and Sandy Travel Tours are offering, and it's to Switzerland, Czech Republic, Germany, and I think Austria. And uh, it's next September, October. And pray to God that the COVID thing is over. And we just have to think positively that that will happen. And, uh, but anyway, so in keeping with Ron's expertise as the awesome host that he is on these tours, uh, he is putting on a Cape Breton tour in a couple of weeks in September, September the 25th to the 27th. Um, it's three days and two nights and it's a Cape Breton tour, but it is focusing and featuring Inverness County on this particular tour. And he's got a, a, a beautiful coach rented. He always goes all out uh, on these tours and uh, a beautiful coach that will be leaving Halifax. Um, I'm not sure of the time, but the website that will be posted will show you all the details, but leaving Halifax on the Friday and traveling uh, to Port Hood, uh, where they will be staying the first night. And there, he will be, uh, once they're all in uh, registered at the, the hotel and they have their supper, they're going to a welcoming Kaylee at Ron's home in Hawthorne and his lovely wife, Bernadette, and she's my cousin. <laughs> so they're, they're great hosts and they have a lovely old farmhouse that uh, it's Ron's actual family home and it, he's added a beautiful piece onto it and it's just uh, they're just wonderful hosts and they're going to be hosting a Kaylee there and, and weather permitting uh, he's he's built like a little platform stage onto the end of his uh, his barn and there's going to be entertainment and music there and I'm going to go to that I can't wait because it's always just a great spot it's just a, a, a beautiful place but this tour will carry on then and the next day they're going all the way through Inverness and Mabu and uh, down to Shetty Camp and uh, all around and staying at different another location on on this the Saturday night and uh, I'm sure it is going to be fantastic because they're they he's lined up great people and music and stories and scenic areas uh, on this Canada's musical coast. And uh, so you'll, you'll, there'll be lots of information on his website and um, his toll free number is there. His email is on there and have a look at the itinerary. And of course it's COVID time. Nobody takes that more seriously than Ronnie and uh, all of the regulations and protocol are all in place uh, on the bus and at every place that he will be going. All of those, um, you know, rules will be clearly uh, uh, followed. But I just, I just, anybody who hasn't done, you know, the Inverness County side, I, I encourage you to, to just, uh, jump on board and call him right away. I'm sure it'll book up quickly. I'm not sure how many are going to be permitted on that big coach, but I'm sure he will, will, will let you know. All that information is on the website and that will be on there. And um, it's, it's, uh, if, if you're looking for the, uh, the uh, website information right now, it's Sandy, S-A-N-D-Y, sandytraveltours.ca will take you right to the site and you'll see information about his other tours that he'll be conducting next year and what he's done in the past but look for this Cape Breton uh, tour off uh, Inverness County and uh, I really hope uh, maybe maybe there's a couple of people out there who are are going to come along and maybe if you're following tunes and wooden spoons I'll get to see you on the Friday night portion I'm looking forward to that and um, okay, I'm gonna go get my tea. I'm gonna have a little bite of my loaf, and um, we'll chat a little bit more.
And I hope you have your, your good teacup, cup and saucer, or your china mug, or one of Colton McDonald's mugs with Cape Breton on it. Whatever you like to drink your tea in. Have a little sip. Ah, you always have to do that. I don't know if that's a Cape Breton thing or not. I know I do it all the time. That first sip, I go, ah, it's just so good. We love our tea, thin and cold tea. And I'm gonna have a little bite. And the, this was made on Wednesday and it's still as moist. I had to, <laughs> I had to hide it. I hid it. I put it in a basket on top of the fridge inside foil so that nobody else would take it that was dropping by. Mm, really nice and moist. Mmm. Delicious. And I wanted to talk to you about something. As I've said before, you know, I have so many of us lose somebody special and I've told you about my friend Marjorie and my friend Ethel who passed away uh, this year Marjorie in January and Ethel in May and after Marjorie died in January I was driving along after she had passed away and I I made a promise to myself that I was going to do something in her memory and now I'm going to be doing it in her memory and in Ethel's memory. And I, I'd love to challenge you to do something, something like that if you can in, in wherever you are. When, when people are coming to the end of their life and it can't be helped and all of that, we all have palliative care. Beautiful volunteers and nurses that work to, to help the, the, those who are dying and and it's a beautiful service a, a absolutely beautiful you can't say enough when you read these obituaries and they're always thanking the the palliative care team and, and and it's just a great service as you know so Marjorie who died in January she was a very beautiful lady glamorous and uh, loved her jewelry and her sparkles and you know stoles and she always looked gorgeous whenever she went out and she was just that kind of person and so much so much so that her grandchildren called her Gigi grandma glamour that's what they called her Gigi for glam uh, grandma glamour so I made a decision then, which I'm still following through with, COVID happened, but for our local palliative care team at our local hospital, um, I've been working with a photographer and uh, Michelle Campbell is her name and she lives in Port Hawkesbury. And um, before COVID, we were actually able to get like six uh, photographs done and what we did was I uh, with the family I picked uh, 12 um, grandmas and we're making a calendar a 2021 calendar and each month we'll have a different grandma glamour and Marjorie being one of them and now Ethel being one of them I'm one of them and anybody who's a grandma and they're gonna, we're gonna have a recipe or a quote and a little bit of information about that person on every month. And all the profit will go to palliative care at our hospital. So um, now that this COVID few months are, are be kind of behind us, not that COVID's behind us, but we're a little bit more at liberty to continue on to get the, the rest of the pictures taken so that I can get the calendar printed and get it out there so that it can be for sale locally for, uh, for our local palliative care.
care uh, team or group at our hospital uh, because God knows they need the money. And there's a beautiful palliative care room now that uh, that has been made available to uh, to all the patients and their families uh, to gather together. So um, I'm so excited about that project. It's just, uh, it, it's, it's a good thing that comes out of a bad thing. And, um, you know, if wherever you are, uh, it's, it's something simple. And, you know, we, we just, we've got all glammed up. I had my picture taken. I, I ordered um, a white kind of a stole uh, and got a really glitzy necklace and earrings and makeup on and and uh, got our pictures taken and it just it's fun and we had so much fun we, uh, we had little hors d'oeuvres here and gathered a, a, it was about five or six of us that had our pictures taken on on that particular day way back back in February and um, so we're going to continue getting the rest of them in there. And uh, we had a glamour shot of, of uh, Marjorie anyway, because she had glamour shots taken when she was home in Boston visiting her, her mom a few years ago. But it's, it's so Marjorie. And uh, anyway, I just wanted to share that with you and challenge you if you would want to do something similar wherever you live. Uh, some maybe a little project to remember someone who you were close to or just give a little donation to your palliative care team because you never know when you're going to need that yourself you know or your family it's 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 uh, it's, not, it's a worthy cause for sure so the other thing I wanted to share with you before we go if you live locally um, I just want you to know that um, some light, little bad light went on on my camera and I hope that it's still working. <laughs> but I have a plant here and I have three of these. I am frozen. I am frozen. Oh. Darn it. You can hear me, but you can't see me. So you know what? I'm just going to keep on talking. Anybody who lives locally, I have a couple of plants, ivy plants, ready to give away to anybody who lives, who wants to come to my house and pick them up. I have three of them. Here's Tammy. Okay, so Tammy is saying you can still hear me. I'm going to keep on talking because I'm just about finished anyway. Um, I have three or four little house plants that I'm giving slips away uh, of, so you can come to my house and anytime and pick them up. And I have three that are already potted that are ivies, and the other one is just kind of a. You'll you'll see a, the plant hanging on top of my bookcase. Well, I'm going to be cutting it back. And uh, the other thing I wanted to say, next week I was going to make um, a brownie cheesecake and instead I'm going to be making hot fudge sundae cake because there's just been a delay there. I was going to partner with a company, but that can't happen until the following Sunday. So next Sunday I'm going to be making a hot fudge sundae cake. You have everything you need probably right in your own house. The only thing extra besides the flour and oil and vanilla and baking powder is you'll need cocoa four tablespoons of cocoa or three tablespoons something like that and um, probably should buy a little bit of good vanilla ice cream to have a scoop on it and it's delicious 
It self sauces and it's been a favorite in our home for a long, long time. And uh, we also have, of course, the beautiful Lisa Cameron joining us. So anyway, people, I'm so sorry I can't see you or that you can't see me. And um, I'm going to uh, sign off now and I hope you have a wonderful week. I love you all and please love one another. Bye-bye.